giant pandas are no longer considered an endangered species. The International Union for Conservation of Nature says the animal status has improved, largely thanks to forest protection and reforestation in China. But it's not all good news from the animal kingdom. The world's largest ape species, called the eastern lowland gorilla, is now listed as critically endangered. Over the past two decades, their population has declined by 77 percent, with fewer than 4,000 remaining on Earth. Dr. M. Sanjayan, conservation scientist and host of the PBS show Earth, A New Wild, is on the phone with us from Honolulu. Good doctor. How are you? I am... Uh, I'm doing well. I, I'm very curious here. Uh, you're attending the uh, IUCN conference in, in Hawaii, and they're the ones that made this announcement. They released these announcements. Why has the gorilla species dropped so low, and what needs to be done to get it back up where it needs to be? Well, we have a real big challenge when it comes to great apes. There are six great apes, our closest living relatives, and all of them are threatened, and four of them are critically endangered. And the problem with great apes, to be honest, is many of the ones in Africa are quite literally being eaten to death. So there's a huge problem with poaching and habitat destruction, logging roads, armed conflict, and so on and so forth. One of them, the orangutan, which is in Indonesia, has a different problem. It's really challenged by oil palm plantations that go into all the products we use from soap to cookies. So it's a challenge, and it, the solution isn't all that easy because it's lots of different things making it confounding. Well, let's take that one variable. You mentioned the, the apes were being eaten. Why mm. are they being eaten? Who's eating them? Uh, and is it a matter of, of well, I don't, just start from the beginning. Why are they being eaten and who's eating them? Look, I live in Montana, and in Montana we eat elk in, in winter. Um, you know, local people often rely on nature for food. Now, you know, if you go back 100 years ago, it was sustainable. We're talking about very few people, hunter-gathering, and the impact isn't going to be so high. Today, there's a lot more people. They live in dire poverty. They have really no other sources of food. And there's also this illegal export market. People in Europe and other parts of the world who have acquired a, a sort of a fetish taste for these things. And so it's driving this market as well. When a logging road goes in, all of a sudden the truck, instead of just taking out timber, is also taking out parts of animals. So it can be sustainable, obviously, if it's local use, but it isn't. Now it's become sort of a global trade. So really the solution is two things. You have to enforce the laws and put in play, you know, enforcement opportunities and mechanisms. But you also have to get people out of poverty. You have to involve local people in conservation efforts. If you can do that, we can save our closest living relatives. Let's take a look at the happier side of this story. The, the giant panda, they've been taken off the endangered list, but of course they're not in the clear. However, they're only vulnerable now. They've improved their situation. What can we learn about the effort, the conservation effort, that got them into a better category? And, and can we apply lessons from that to the gorilla population? Absolutely. So this comes from the IUCN Red List. So this list that tracks all these animals that my organization, Conservation International, was a founding partner of. Pandas have improved. Uh, they're not out, not out of the woods yet, so to speak, or out of the bamboo forest yet, <laughs> but they have improved. And this is because of two reasons. One is conservation groups, including my own, but also World Wildlife Fund and others, have really put a lot of effort into raising awareness about why pandas matter. Then the Chinese government has really, really stepped up. And we, you know, we get a lot of bad news out of China sometimes when it comes to the environment, but they really have done this. They've figured out how to breed pandas in captivity. They've figured out how to reforest areas for bamboo. And most importantly, they're now starting to put pandas back into the wild. All right, Dr. M. Sanjian, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Take care.